Coming up on News 3 New Mexico, a discussion about fairness in farming comes to Albuquerque this week, and we will have the details for you. Eastern New Mexico is still experiencing fire warnings. Find out more in my full weather forecast. And an update on the Smokehouse Creek Fire. Learn more about it right now. This is News 3 New Mexico, your local source for news, sports, and first weather. Good evening and welcome to News 3 New Mexico. I'm Chandra Benz. And I'm Paige Gard. Thank you so much for watching. The community at Eastern New Mexico University and at KENW-TV have been left mourning following the death of Don Chris. He passed away peacefully at home on the night of March 2nd at the age of 81. Before he passed away, Don Chris took the time to share what he sees as his legacy. Legacy. Here's what he had to say. Well, uh, it, I, I'm seeing, I'm looking around here at a dream come true. Uh, when, when we were in the first 10, 15 years, uh, I worried about my fellow employees. Some of them were younger, quite a bit younger. And I, and I had, gone through a long time, and, and especially when I got up to about 30 years in the business, I got to thinking, boy, I, I, hope, these, I hope these young guys are going to, I hope this is going to be here. I hope we can be here with this for them so that they can work and they can pass on their information to the students. And uh, I wanted students to be able to come and use this stuff and learn things forever. Don Chris spent 49 years working as a videographer, teacher, and as the host of KENW's You Should Know. He starred in plays like Mary Chase's Harvey, volunteered as one of Santa's special helpers, and led many students to embark on their own successful careers in television. Don Chris's family has encouraged anyone who wishes to honor Don's memory to donate to KENW-TV or to Gideon's International, ensuring that the communities he held dear during his life can continue to thrive for years to come. In Texas, firefighters are still working to put out the biggest wildfire the state has ever seen. The deadly Smokehouse Creek fire is now 44% contained. It has claimed at least three lives. It has also destroyed hundreds of homes and businesses, damaged numerous crops, and killed thousands of livestock. CNN's Camila Bernal reports. I'm guessing we may have found 50 dead so far. We're not finding many calves, so I know they burned up. Shane Pennington is the ranch manager at the Field Mailer Ranch in Canadian, Texas. This is also where he lives and raises his family. As the largest wildfire in the state's history began to encircle the ranch, Pennington was forced to evacuate. I wasn't scared of it. I was, I was more angry, I guess. Just 20 years of, you know, taking care of this, it's, and it could all be gone. I wasn't really fearful for the house. I figured it would probably be okay. I was more worried about the cattle. For you, the hard decision was actually leaving. Yes, yeah, and, and feeling like I didn't do enough to get them. Local officials estimate thousands of cattle among area ranches will be lost to the Smokehouse Creek Fire, which has already scorched more than a million acres. The state's agricultural commissioner, Sid Miller. This fire was so intense, you couldn't get the fire trucks anywhere close to the fire. Pennington says he did not have time or a place to move the cattle. A lot of them have been blinded by it. It burned their eyelashes, eyelids, everything, and, and, and just burned all the hair off of them. Their feet are coming off, their hooves, they're bloody. Uh, it burned their udders. And you know, even if they survive it, more than likely they're gonna get pneumonia, they're gonna get sick. We've already had to put some down. It's better than letting them suffer and just die, you know. This is one little calf here. I don't know if he's gonna be all right. Uh, his feet are burned really bad. It's extremely hard to see them suffer. I mean, they're just, like I say, I've raised some of them since they were babies, you know. State officials called the impact to cattle and crops catastrophic. We've lost over 3,000 head, which is a very small number. That will double or triple easily. Uh, we've got cattle that we're gonna have to euthanize because of the damage to their hooves, their udders. The ranch's owner says his cows bring in anywhere from $1,800 to $2,400 each, much of it for beef sales. It's going to hurt the business extremely bad. So, and it'll take years to recover because it takes years to put a cow herd together before they're productive and producing like they should be. Your job is to keep them alive. It's not to destroy them. And it's, it's tough. It's really tough. 
Other fires in the Panhandle are closer to being fully contained, with the Windy Deuce fire being 81% contained and the Grapevine Creek fire being 77% contained. A lawsuit has been filed about a fallen utility pole that was the alleged origin of the smokehouse fire. The investigation is still ongoing. Three years after he was initially arrested, Jose Maldonado has been found guilty by a Curry County jury of kidnapping, sexual penetration, criminal sexual penetration, and burglary. These convictions follow an incident on May 21, 2021, when Maldonado broke into a home and assaulted a sleeping woman. Unfortunately, the victim, fortunately, the victim was able to trick Maldonado into checking the door by claiming that someone was walking by the window. After escaping to a neighbor's home, the victim called 911 and Maldonado was arrested. He now faces up to 30 years in prison for his crimes. The Roswell Regional Skate Park is holding a public meeting about its future on March 8, 2024. You can join the meeting where the project team will share and discuss potential sites, park elements, and general public project information. The project team will also be able to answer questions, receive input, and address comments and concerns from local residents. The meeting will be held at Roswell's Public Library from 4.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. and is located at 301 North Pennsylvania Avenue in Roswell. And for more information, you can call 505-264-0111. So, Jonathan, you said there was a winter storm watch, warning, and fire in the same sentence? Like, what's going on yeah, here? Yeah, we have both of those going on right now. Wow. But as we can see on the national scale, we've got a lot of rain that's coming up. We have a lot of rain on the eastern side of the country covering a lot of the states over here. We've got a lot in New York and Pennsylvania. And as you can see, as we on the western side of the country, we also have a lot in California piling up through San Francisco. And it's kind of traveling westward into the country. And taking a look at our allergy report, tree allergies are at their medium level. So if you have those allergies, you be sure to watch out for that. And we have a fire weather warning in this pink color right here. That's going to be in Harding, Mora, San Miguel, and Union County. And up here in this blue, we have a winter storm watch in Colfax and Union. But I'll have more on that in my full weather forecast. Back to you. Thank you, Jonathan. Food, farming, and fairness are the topics in Albuquerque this week at a gathering of those who support the Opportunities for Fairness and Farming Act. A diverse group of panelists is addressing the checkoff programs and others they see as systemic injustices in the farming industry. Roz Brown reports. The legislation is meant to reform what are known as agriculture checkoff programs. Introduced decades ago, checkoff programs started as a way for farmers to pool their resources for research and promotion of their products. But now, Critics charge they're being used by corporate lobbyists to consolidate wealth and power into ever fewer hands. In New Mexico, cattle rancher Cash Carruth is one of many forced to pay into the checkoff program, which he says favors corporations that control the meatpacking industry. You have four main packers that pretty much dictate our pricing on our cattle. So what's actually happening in the cattle industry is they've outsmarted us. Clara Sims thinks the OFF Act would level the playing field. She says farmers, ranchers, and other producers need the restrictions included in the bill because they've seen their checkoff dollars squandered or used against their interests. They really don't benefit a lot of farmers and actually work against a lot of farmers because that money disproportionately benefits large industrial ag. Despite the good intentions, Carruth believes a lack of oversight by the U.S. Department of Agriculture has even allowed corruption in the checkoff program. We don't know exactly how the money's being spent, and I'm not against the checkoff. But now we've built this whole big organization off of our dollars, and they use it as they see fit. And what they see fit is whatever the Packers want. I'm Roz Brown reporting. At the meeting, the group, which includes far both farmers and ranchers, joined by religious and advocacy groups, is also covering other topics in agriculture, including racial discrimination and high suicide rate among farmers. For those looking to celebrate Easter a little early and even get a free photo with the Easter Bunny, the Lee County Courthouse is hosting an event on Wednesday, March 27th in Lovington, New Mexico. The event runs from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. and is open to the public. Kids can enjoy free goodie bags and everyone can enjoy some free lemonade while supplies last. The Lee County Historic Courthouse can be found at 100 North Main Street in Lovington, New Mexico. Residents of Clovis and Portales don't have to miss out either. A free underwater Easter egg hunt will take place on March 30th. 
Several egg hunts will take place for various age groups with more information provided to those who sign up. Registration is required, but you can go to the Aquatic Center at 1700 East 7th Street any day before March 22nd to sign up. If you or relative is planning your dream wedding, you might find everything you need at the 4th Annual Clovis Wedding Expo. The event will take place in just a few weeks at the Clovis Civic Center at 801 Sheps Boulevard. The event will take place between 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. on March 23rd and will feature over 40 vendors from across New Mexico and Texas. Caterers, of event planners, sound and lighting engineers, graphic artists, and photographers are just a few of the types of vendors that will be present during the event. The best part about the event is that admission is completely free. If you're ready to see what local businesses have to offer for weddings or other events, the Clovis Wedding Expo is the best place to go. With the 2024 New Mexico State Fair looming, tickets have finally gone on sale. Music games, carnival, food, food and exhibitions are within reach, and all it, all it costs is the price of a ticket. The tickets are available online at a discounted rate, priced at $15 for adults and $10 for children aged between 6 and 12, and elders over age 65. Beyond the discount, buying your ticket online will give you access to expedited entry. Plan ahead. While the New Mexico State Fair might take place between September 5th and 15th, it will arrive sooner than you expect. To purchase tickets, you can go to www.statefair.expoNM.com. Coming up after the break, Jonathan will have their full weather report for you. But first, here's a look at today's financial market. Welcome back. Let's take another look at that weather, shall we? As you can see, we've got some rain that's kind of traveling northeastward throughout, throughout the United States, and it's kind of passing up into the evening into New York and Pennsylvania and West Virginia. And as you can see on the western side of the country, we have rain kind of coming, coming at us toward westward through Los Angeles. And we're seeing some snow even in Nevada and Utah. But taking a look at New Mexico, around the southern part of the state, we're seeing some rain showers that's going to keep continuous, continuously passing through towards the evening until around 11 p.m. And taking a look at eastern New Mexico, we are seeing some rain kind of in the same area around Carlsbad and Alamogordo. Take, we have a fire weather warning in Harding, Mora, San Miguel, and Union, as well as all of the counties in the pink color right here until 7 p.m. tonight. And we also have a winter storm watch until Friday at 11 p.m. for Colfax and Union counties in that blue color right there. We currently have a lot of wind speeds going on. Most of the state is in the 10 mile per hour range, but we are seeing some 20 to 30 miles per hour for, throughout most of the state. And into Thursday afternoon, we are going to see those wind speeds start to pick up to 20, 30, even start to head into 40s. And then for Friday, we're seeing a lot of the same for the eastern part of the state. We're having 10, 20 mile per hour winds, and they slowly die off as the afternoon moves on. Taking a look at our current temperatures, we've got 56 in Farmington with 54 in Gallup. We've got 63 in both Truths or Consequences in Alamogordo, 59 in Albuquerque, and 55 in Santa Fe, 57 in both Raton and Clayton, 72 in both Carlsbad and Hobbs, 
And taking a look at eastern New Mexico and west Texas, we've got 64 in Tucumcari and Clovis, 66 in Portales and Amarillo, and 70 in Lubbock. Taking a look at tonight's lows, Raton and Clayton will be at 29 and 32 respectively. Farmington's at 30 and 26 is in Gallup. The Silver City's at a nice 39 with Alamogordo at 41. Albuquerque's at 36 and 29 is in Santa Fe. And taking a look at eastern New Mexico, we've got 35 in Clovis and 38 in Portales. And tomorrow's highs, we're going to be seeing a lot of 50s, 60s throughout the state with a 56 in Farmington, 68 in Las Cruces and Alamogordo, 56 in Santa Fe, 59 up here in Clayton, 72 in Carlsbad and 73 in Hobbs. And for eastern New Mexico and west Texas, we've got 68 in Clovis, 69 in Portales, 72 in Amarillo, and 75 in Lubbock. Taking a look at our seven-day forecast, Roswell is going to be seeing a lot of sunny skies and around the 670s. And for the weekend, we're seeing some 50s and even 68 on Sunday. But taking a look at Portales, we are seeing some winds on Friday at 49. And we're seeing 55 and 65 for Sunday and improving on into the week with, seven, with nice 70s. Well, it sounds like it's going to be really nice here. Springtime's finally come. Well, that's all the time we have for weather. We hope you'll be right back after this break. Welcome back. The Clovis Community College Board of Trustees has made its selection of five finalists for the presidency of the college. Among those chosen are Dr. Barbara Beebe, the current president of Western Texas College in Snyder, Texas, Dr. Morgan Phillips, who serves as the vice chancellor for academic excellence at Piedmont Community College in Tucson, Arizona, Christopher Brettmeyer, who most recently served as the president of Clatstop Community College in Astoria, Oregon, Jonathan Fuentes, the current vice president of academic partnerships at Odessa College, and Dr. Brian Newton, who serves as the Vice President for Enrollment, Management, and Student Services at Warwick Community College in Salisbury, Maryland. Each presidential finalist will participate in an open community forum. The public is invited and encouraged to attend all open forums. There will be a brief introduction of the candidate, followed by a question and answer session. You can contact Clovis Community College for additional information. The Southwest Spitfire Valentina Loca recently visited ENMU, and we were lucky enough to get an interview. News 3's Paige Guard has more. That was former wrestler Maria Elena Martinez, a.k.a. the Southwest Spitfire Valentina Loca. Martinez is an ENMU graduate who always had a passion for wrestling. For the entirety of my life, or at least for as long as I can remember, my life has been revolving around just like this passion for professional wrestling. And with me being only like 4'10", maybe 100 pounds on a good day, um, I grew up kind of having the realism of being like, well, maybe I can't like be a wrestler myself because I'm just so tiny and I can't really do it. So I was like, well, dang it, I'm going to get into wrestling somehow. And, you know, professional wrestling has like writers and camera crew and people like that. So I was like, I'm going to get in the door one day. And then uh, it actually turned out that while I was at ENMU, I had joined Greyhound MMA, which was a club of like people who did MMA over in Greyhound Arena. And I had actually done 
doing pretty all right with that. Like I had gotten punched in the face for real and I survived. And I was like, heck yeah, brother. Like if I can get, you know, punched in the face for real, let me go and actually do wrestling. Make it very easy to find me on social media. My handles on everything. It's Twitter or X, who calls it X? Uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, if you want to see me cringy dance. Um, it's all going to be at S West Spitfire. So that's spelled S-W-E-S-T. S P I T F I R E. So like my wrestler name was the Southwest Spitfire, Valentina Loca. So I'm very big on branding. And I think I learned that from ENMU here is that like you have to have a brand. You have to find it, make it easy for people to find you. You have to have some kind of identifiable quality. So with me being the Southwest Spitfire, I was like, well, S West Spitfire, you can find me on social media. What's up? For New Street, I'm H Guard. Martinez graduated from ENMU in 2017 with a degree in communication, who used to work uh, as, a news, as a News 3 as a director, producer, and an on-air talent. The clock will jump forward by an hour in just a few days with the arrival of Daylight Saving Time at 2 a.m. on March 10th. With that, you can expect an extra hour of darkness in the morning and a bit more light before the sun sets during the evening. As daylight saving time becomes increasingly unpopular, it's possible that we may not observe the time change in the future. Outside of the Navajo Nation, Arizona does not observe daylight saving time, and bills intended to permanently switch New Mexico to one time have been introduced in past years. With various studies finding that a majority of Americans prefer sticking to the same, year, to the same time year-round, there is still a chance that we may enjoy a simpler routine in the future. You don't have to travel far to enjoy cuisine from around the world in Rio Doso. Food trucks dishing out delicious servings of pizza, burgers, shakes, coffee, barbecue, and more can all be found at the Food Truck Center at 1056 Meacham Drive. The Food Truck Center is a great place to bring your friends and family with other offerings, like an arcade filled with games and a cozy fire pit with comfortable seating, situated right next to the line of food trucks. Consider giving it a try. You might find your new favorite dish. Coming up after the break, Jaden will have his full sports report for you, so stay tuned. Welcome back, sports fans. I'm Jane Phillips. Let's get into this week's sports. ENME basketball is in Frisco, Texas, as they get ready to face off San Angelo State in the Lone Star Conference Tournament tomorrow night at 7.30 Mountain Standard Time in the quarterfinals. The Hounds go into the tournament as a four seed. We'll have a score and highlights Friday. Caitlin Clark, the young superstar, is your new NCAA all-time scoring leader in college basketball as she passed Pistol Pete's record on Sunday on senior night as the Iowa, Iowa Hawkeyes beat Ohio State in a Big Ten showdown as she broke the record with a pair of free throws with the new record, the all-time record, with 3,685 points as she and the Hawkeyes get ready for the NCAA Division I tournament. Well done for the young superstar as she gets ready for the WNBA next year. ENME Baseball had a four-game series versus number eight West Texas A&M, and the Hounds managed to split the four-game series. 
As of softball, they had a tough weekend versus Oklahoma Christian as they lost a three-game series to them. They hope to bounce back this weekend versus number 25, San Angelo State, in a three-game series. The Portales Rams boys and girls are getting ready for the state tournament as the boys are the 10 seed and they play the 7 seed Lovington and the Lady Rams are the 5 seed as they will play the 12 seed Hope Christian. These games will be played on Friday. We'll have scores and highlights next week. Well, that's all the sports I have for you today. We'll be back at the desk after the break. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. We hope you guys join us again next time. Good night.